Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. Yeah, okay, I'm here. <clears throat> um, yeah, so today I want to go to um, through the UN report, the report that the, that a UN um, team just published for um, to show that uh, many cases of sexual violence, rape, gang rape, and other forms of uh, violence and torture took place on October 7, perpetrated by Hamas and by other groups. Uh, the UN published the report. Um, it came out yesterday. Um, and Hamas responded to it today by saying that they condemn the report, of course, uh, after praising the UN and sucking up to the UN since October 7. Immediately they turned on the UN. And um, Israel said, finally, finally, Israel is actually acknowledging the reality of this. So uh, I want to go through the, the, the report and look at it, see what the UN uh, team found, and analyze all of that, because I think this is important and needs to be highlighted. I made a community tweet about this, a uh, community post about this yesterday. I wasn't really sure if I should um, go through this live because it's kind of dark, but lots of people said I should. And I thought, yeah, I probably should. So, uh, how is everybody doing? Good, 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 good. Okay, fantastic. Ali Dawa called you Waste Man AP. Pfft, Ali Dawa can go um, play with goats. The Nubis girl, AP, how dare you be five minutes late? No soup for you. Soup? How dare you? How dare you? Um, all right, let me share my screen here and go through this thing. Let's see. Okay. So the UN has been extremely disappointing and extremely lazy and has been employing um, organizations within its, you know, within within the UN that are just that are an embarrassment, and that outright aid um, Hamas terrorists like the the UNRWA or the UNRWA, which is basically a, a Palestinian organization for human rights in Palestine, uh, as it as it claims. Um, and it turned out that lots of the members of that uh, of that organization participate in the in the October seven terrorist attacks, and uh, that has been coming out. And they also have a history of for decades uh, indoctrinating the youth in Gaza with all kinds of terrorism and anti semitism and all of that. Uh, then they have in a, a UN special reporter who is a who is a complete uh, scumbag of a person she what's her name francesca albanese uh she just she shares fake news in favor of hamas and against israel and all of that however we did now have a special team from the united nations go to israel to the gaza envelope within israel and to the west bank and uh throughout israel um so a, a, a team consisting of um, of this woman, who is the head of the team, uh, what's her name, Pramila Patton. So this woman here, she went there together with um, an envoy, a team of uh, experts on sexual assault and sexual violence and all of that. And uh, she came back after... Um, three weeks or two and a half weeks of going through Israel, collecting evidence, speaking to all kinds of people and all of that, she came and said there is clear and convincing information that hostages held in Gaza uh, are subjected to sexual violence. Um, so those who are still held in Gaza, because one of the conclusions in the report is that um, is that Israelis captured by Gaza and taken to captured by Hamas and taken to Gaza uh, are known or concluded to have experienced sexual violence in captivity, and it is um, 
there are reasonable grounds to believe that this is still continuing, which is why she says now that she calls for a ceasefire to immediately get those um, hostages out of Gaza and all that. Now, there are some people who took issue with uh, with with this report, of course, because they uh, are anti-Israel, anti-Zionism, pro-Hamas, and so on. And they were like, "Oh, this is not proof. It's not proof. It's just it just says reasonable grounds." Um, it would be nice to actually have somebody here who can um, who can reliably add something, a legal context. But uh, reasonable grounds here. This term, reasonable grounds, does not mean. Um, it's not like a common language, like, oh, you know, I I think it's reasonable that there was rape. No, reasonable grounds is a legal term and basically means that um, that there is enough information and enough evidence to um, to be convinced that a crime has occurred. Naturally, it is uh, not a conviction because even if you have plenty of evidence that uh you know you go to a crime scene and there are you know there's tons of material on the ground there's blood on the ground there are bodies and this and that you might have reasonable grounds to believe that uh you know a a, a big massive act of violence and murder and uh torture and this and that occurred but you still have to go to court to establish all the facts and uh and find proof beyond reasonable doubt to then lead to a conviction but here is for example um the explanation in legal terms um, a quick definition of reasonable grounds refers to having a good reason to believe that someone has done something wrong or that a place has something connected to a crime. This is important because before the police can arrest someone or search a place, they need to have more than just a feeling that something is wrong. They need to have evidence or facts that would make a reasonable person believe that a crime has been committed. This is called probable cause. It's like when you have a good reason to think your little brother took your toy because you saw him playing with it earlier. That's reasonable grounds to ask him about it. Um, and further, um, for example, if a police officer sees someone breaking into a house, they have reasonable grounds to suspect that the person has committed a crime. Similarly, if a person is found with drugs in their possession, the police have reasonable grounds to suspect that the person is committing a crime. So this is a solid case. But because uh, of the standards of law, of justice, um, of course, you have to take this uh, further and find... Um, all the details and all the evidence in order to then um, reach proof beyond reasonable doubt and make a conviction, which is why this UN team is now um, calling for a further uh, thorough investigation into all of the details. Because this team went there not to, um, not to do an investigation, which is also something that people misunderstand. They say, oh, they were not there to investigate. Well, what they mean by that is that they were not there to establish all of the facts. They were there to basically establish reasonable ground. What comes next is to go in there and to look at all the details of everything that happened. So um, uh, let's see what it says here. Uh, in a press release issued along with the report, which I will read in a, in a little bit, not fully, but the relevant parts, that there are also reasonable grounds to believe that such violence, which includes other cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment, may be continuing against those still being held by Hamas and other extremists in the Gaza Strip. The report from her office arose from an official visit to Israel at the invitation of the government, which included a visit to the occupied West Bank between 29 January and 14 February. In the context of the coordinated attack by Hamas and others of October 7, the UN mission team found that there are reasonable grounds to believe that conflict-related sexual violence occurred in multiple occasions, including rape and gang rape in at least three locations in southern Israel. The team also found a pattern of victims, mostly women, found fully or partially naked bound and shot across multiple locations, which may be indicative of some forms of sexual violence. In some locations, the mission said it could not verify reported incidents of rape. Then there is a one hour uh, press conference in which uh, they go through it. Now they also have in the report saying that there are some complaints and some evidence uh, which they found in the West Bank coming from uh, you know Palestinians of unjust treatment, uh, including some forms of sexual violence 
like invasive searching uh, by Israeli security forces. And of course, uh, Israel invited them. They concluded this. They will have to go with, with, through with that as well. If there is evidence that uh, implicates certain Israel security forces, that, that, has, that has to be dealt with as well, to be very, very fair. However, the report here primarily focuses on what uh, Hamas and Gazan organizations and people did. And um, they say the true extent of sexual violence may never be fully known. It could take months or years to emerge, uh, you know, all of the details. Uh, it was not investigative in nature, conducted 33 meetings with Israeli representatives, examining more than 5,000 photographic images and 50 hours of video footage. It conducted 34 confidential interviews, including with survivors and witnesses of the October 7 attacks, released hostages, first responders and others. The report says that Israeli authorities have faced numerous challenges in collecting evidence. Some people make it look like, oh, this is nothing. It's just, you know, they just went there and just listened to the Israeli authorities, just a few people. No, this here shows the extent of their of their search. But let's get to the report. Let us look at the report. So uh, the report is relatively long. I'm not going to read all of it here. Um, however, I will look at a few places. Um, so the visit which was carried out at the invitation of the government of Israel also included a visit to the occupied West Bank uh, is what happened. Um, ethical interviewing of survivors, victims, and witness of sexual uh, violence, crimes, and so on. Uh, the team, the mission team visited the four locations affected by the October 7 attacks in the Gaza periphery, namely Nahal Oz military base, Kibbutz Beri, the Nova Music Festival site, and Road 232, where reports of sexual violence had emerged. For the purpose of the present report, information was also gathered pertaining to incidents of CRSV, which means uh, conflict-related sexual violence, reportedly committed in Kibbutzim, Kfar Azar, and Reim, which the mission team did not visit. Uh, information received... Um, by the mission team indicates that on the morning of October 7, at about 6.30 and under the cover of an unprecedented barrage of rockets, a coordinated attack by Hamas and other groups happened against civilians, resulted in 1,200 fatalities. Total of 253 individuals, including some deceased, were taken as hostages. Um, yep. And authorities faced numerous challenges in the collection of evidence numerous challenges in the collection of evidence uh, with very specific challenges related to the crimes of sexual violence. This included limited survivor and witness testimony, limited forensic evidence due to the large number of casualties and dispersed crime scenes in a context of persistent hostilities. The loss of potentially valuable evidence due to the interventions of some inadequately trained volunteer first responders. This is a shame. The prioritization of rescue operations and the recovery, identification and burial of the deceased in accordance with religious practices over the collection of forensic evidence. Um, also significant number of the recovered bodies had suffered destructive burn damage. Had suffered dest destructive burn damage, which made the identification of potential crimes of sexual violence impossible. Let that sink in here. Uh, verifying information, limited number of, of and access to survivors. Uh, there was one thing here. While the mission team was able to meet with some released hostages as well, as with some survivors and witnesses of the attacks, it did not meet with any survivor victim of sexual violence from, from October 7, despite concerted efforts encouraging them to come forward. The mission team was made aware of a small number of survivors who are undergoing specialized treatment and still experiencing an overwhelming level of trauma. Further, the internal displacement of several communities from the Gaza periphery to other locations, the relocation of survivors to the Nova Music Festival attacks, both internally and to third countries, as well as the deployment of October 7 first responders from the military forces to combat, hindered access to first-hand information. Uh, here is something. The lack of trust by survivors of the October 7 attacks and families 
of hostages in national institutions and internal organizations, such as the United Nations, as well as the national and international media scrutiny of those who made their accounts public, hindered access to survivors of the attacks, including potential survivors, victims of sexual violence. I think this is mentioned again uh, further on in the report that um, a lot of people, uh, a lot of the survivors, victims, and so on, um, felt great um, hopelessness and mistrust and all of that, not only in the US, uh, not, not only in the UN um, team, but also in uh, Israeli national and also international organizations and so on. I don't know why there is a little scumbag here in the chat uh, insulting people and countries and beliefs. Uh, ban user Good, banned, goodbye. 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 Get the hell out of here! Okay. Um, uh, forensic evidence uh, linking individuals to specific videos. Inaccurate and reliable forensic interpretations by some non-professionals also represented a challenge. Uh, lastly, the mission took place over a limited period of two and a half weeks and in a context for Israel where no dedicated UN country team or infrastructure is operational. Considering the scale and magnitude of the attacks and the range of locations and the high number of casualties, the mission team could not comprehensively cover the full range of the situation. This is why they are um, calling for a full-fledged investigation by a UN team to go there and make uh, review everything that is there, everything that happened. Based on the information gathered by the mission team from multiple and independent sources, multiple and independent sources, there are reasonable grounds to believe that conflict-related sexual violence occurred during the October 7 attacks in multiple locations across Gaza periphery, including rape and gang rape in at least three locations. Across the various locations of the October 7 attacks, the mission team found that several fully naked or partially naked bodies from the waist down were recovered, mostly women, not only, but mostly women, with hands tied and shot multiple times, often in the head. Although circumstantial, such a pattern of undressing and restraining of victims may be indicative of some form of sexual violence. At the Nova Music Festival and its surroundings, uh, one of the most crucial places, there are reasonable grounds, again, strong, to believe that multiple incidents of sexual violence took place with the victims being subjected to rape and or gang rape and then killed or killed while being raped. This is the Islamic resistance movement. The Islamic resistance movement, as they call themselves, Hamas. Islamic resistance movement. Reasonable grounds to believe that multiple incidents of sexual violence took place with victims being subjected to rape and or gang rape. So they um, they have reasonable grounds to believe that gang rape took place uh, and they go rape and or gang rape and then killed or killed while being raped. Credible sources described finding murdered individuals, mostly women, whose bodies were naked from their waist down some totally naked, tied with their hands behind their backs, many of whom were shot in the head. On Road 232, credible information based on witness accounts describe an incident of the rape of two women by armed elements by Hamas terrorists. Other reported instances of rape could not be verified in the time allotted. The mission team also found a pattern of bound naked or partially naked bodies from the waist down, in some cases tied to structures, including trees and poles, along Road 232. A pattern of bound naked bodies tied to structures like trees and poles. Uh, this is the Islamic resistance movement the pure Islamic resistance movement that is fighting oppression, supposedly fighting apartheid here. 
The mission team conducted a visit to Kibbutz Be'eri and was able to determine that at least two allegations of sexual violence widely repeated in the media were unfounded due to either new superseding information or inconsistency in the facts gathered. Good to see consistency here. These included a highly publicized allegation of a pregnant woman whose womb had reportedly been ripped open before being killed with her fetus stabbed while still inside her. I like to think that it is good that this is likely not true. Other allegations, including of objects intentionally inserted into female genital organs, could not be verified by the mission team due in part to limited and low-quality imagery. This will be left to the full-fledged investigation. <clears throat> in Kibbutz Kfar Azar, while reports of conflict-related sexual violence, including at least one instance of rape, could not be verified, not be verified, Available circumstantial evidence may be indicative of some forms of sexual violence. In this kibbutz, similar to other locations, female victims were found fully or partially naked to the waist down, with their hands tied behind their backs and shot. In the Nahal Oz military base, the mission team reviewed reports. Uh, Nada said, my overdue Jizya payment, Mr. Prophet, please accept it. I accept it. I accept it today. Thank you so much. And I'll expect you back soon. Not necessarily with Jizya, just your presence here. In the Nahal Oz military base, the mission team reviewed reports of sexual violence, in including a case of rape and genital mutilation, neither of which could be verified. With respect to the latter instance, while the forensic analysis reviewed injuries to intimate body parts, no discernible pattern could be identified against either female or male soldiers. However, seven female soldiers were abducted from this base into Gaza. I'm, I'm constantly conflicted when I read these between feeling relieved about something and then also not. I don't know. With respect to hostages, the mission team found clear and convincing information. Hostages, this is important. With respect to hostages, the mission team found clear and convincing information that some have been subjected to various forms of conflict-related sexual violence, including rape and sexualized torture and sexualized, cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment. And it also has reasonable grounds to believe that such violence may be ongoing. This is extremely important because um, there are still hostages held. I talked to, um, to the Hostages and Missing Families Forum, that is the Bring Them Home group that is... Um, that you know spreads all those uh, chains and hoodies and makes all the all the ads to advocate for the return of hostages. Um, they told me that there are currently 134, I believe, hostages still held by Hamas. Um, they received. They have credible information that around 30 of those are already dead, but they are still kept by Hamas. Their bodies are still kept by Hamas. Uh, with the others, they don't know if they are alive or dead, and Hamas won't give them any information. In fact, Hamas uh, doesn't know. Hamas doesn't know how many of the of the hostages are still alive or dead. Apparently, Hamas can report immediately within seconds after a an incident how many people died, but they don't know how many of the hostages are still alive and how many are not the ones in their own captivity. And um, there were reports already, although they were kind of under the radar, that um, so all the hostages that came back were inspected by, by doctors and by different um, experts um, who told the media that there is clear proof and clear evidence that um, that 
many of the victims, many of the hostages, like in, in one batch, there were 10 of them experienced sexual violence of some sort, either full-fledged rape or other kinds of sexual violence uh, as when they were in captivity um, by Hamas and other groups or even uh, regular citizens, re re regular um, civilians in Gaza. Um, so they, they know that these things occurred, which means um, that the hostages held are still in danger Many of them may be experiencing sexual violence as we speak by the great moral Islamic resistance movement, Hamas. And then there is a uh, visit to the Palestinian territory to Ramallah occupied West Bank upon invitation by Israel, where they listened to um, complaints. Purpose of the visit uh, was to hear the views and concerns of Palestinian counterparts and engage with them on reports of conflict related to sexual violence received by the mandate committed by Israeli security forces and settlers. Uh, this will complement information already verified by other UN entities. At the same time, while this is happening, there is a report in the making of allegations against Israel um, in the West Bank that is supposed to come out. What they concluded here at some point is that there was no case of um, of sexual assault by IDF security forces uh, received. However, they did, um, they were told by people in the West Bank that there were um, cases of harassment by Israeli security forces against uh, against people in the in the West Bank, or, you know, threats of sexual violence and things like that, um, where the authorities in charge, the Israeli authorities, said there is no way and we make sure to punish anyone who uh, commits such acts. Key recommendations from the visit. Uh, don't want to read through this whole thing. I think um, I think they will summarize this later. Oh, here is an important point. To urge Hamas and other armed groups to immediately and unconditionally release all individuals held in captivity and to ensure their protection, including from sexual violence. What's what's um, important is also the ICJ, the International Court of Justice, on January 26th, when they did their preliminary ruling, um, they did tell Hamas that they must immediately and unconditionally release all hostages in their captivity. And despite Hamas saying that they would comply with anything that the ICJ uh, rules, they so far did not comply with that at all. They are still making conditions. They're supposed to release the hostages immediately and unconditionally. Not doing that means going against the ruling of the ICJ, and they're just shooting themselves in their foot right now with that. <clears throat> um, all right composition of mission team uh i made a notes on several um spots here that i'm i will want to go through very very quickly Mission was not intended to be and is not a substitute for an investigation by relevant United Nations entities mandated for that purpose, nor is it a replacement for criminal investigations and proceedings subject to, due to, to due process of law. Some geniuses were like, oh, look, this is not an investigation anyway. Well, this that's how it goes. First, a, a team goes and establishes reasonable grounds, and then a full-fledged criminal investigation starts uh, um, in investigating all of the evidence and establishing the case until they reach a solution or a conclusion and a conviction. Um, the primary standard of proof in this report is one of reasonable grounds to believe there have been occasions where more information has supported a finding of fact and the overall finding has therefore been stated to be established at the level of clear and convincing information. United Nations reporting has used a clear and convincing standard, uh, and although there is no single definition of the term, it is generally agreed that clear and convincing information or evidence rises above reasonable grounds to believe, yet falls beyond, falls below, beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, so, some 
of the things that are that are here explained as clear and convincing are even more even stronger than reasonable grounds which means there is very little reason to doubt that something occurred that, that a certain crime occurred uh, conflict related to sexual violence. Um, the term you thus refers to rape, sexual slavery, forced prostitution, forced pregnancy. Okay, this just explains what the term may refer to. The mission team conducted its process of gathering, analysis, and verification of information related to incidents and patterns of uh, CRSV in strict adherence with established United Nations standards and methodologies, and with specific attention to the gendered impact of violations. The mission team conducted its work in accordance with the principles um, of independence, impartiality, objectivity, transparency, integrity, and the principle of do no harm, including in relation to guarantees of confidentiality and the protection of victims and witnesses. It also followed a survivor, victim-centered, and trauma-informed approach. Mission did not conduct interviews unless the sources agreed to be interviewed, uh, identifiable information, and so on. Uh, full cooperation of the government of Israel, important, is visited, it visited several identified sites like Nahal Oz military base, Kibbutz Beri, uh, the Nova Music Festival site, and Road 232 with the support of the Israeli authorities. Not all sites mentioned in this report could be visited due to time and security constraints, and where relevant, the mission team gathered documentary and digital information. Uh, and interviewed witnesses and other sources without undertaking an on-site visit. <sighs> All right. Uh, 33 meetings with representatives of the Israeli national institutions. Forensic pathologist and a digital analyst reviewed over 5,000 photos, around 50 hours, and several audio files of footage of the attacks. Um, CCTV, traffic surveillance cameras, actual cameras, body cameras, and so on. Um, all right. 27 representatives of Israeli civil society, including the Hostages and Missing Families Forum, NGOs, academics, and activists working on women's rights, sexual violence, and international criminal law during seven meetings, at which information was shared. The mission team also met with families and relatives of hostages still held in captivity, as well as some members of the community displaced from kibbutz near Oz. Further, the mission team carried out its own confidential interviews with survivors and witnesses of the 7 October attacks, released hostages, first responders, health professionals, service providers, and others. In total, the mission team conducted interviews according to UN standards and mythology, method, methodology with a total of 34 interviewees. All right. Um, <clears throat> now, let's get to... Three cumulative waves of attacks resulted in ruthless levels of violence, including against numerous civilian and military targets. The first wave was reportedly composed of Hamas commandos. The second wave of Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, popular resistance committees, and other Palestinian military organizations breaching from Gaza that joined the ongoing operation. And the third wave of armed elements and unarmed individuals entering from Gaza into Israel. This is actually quite important. So three cumulative waves of attacks came from Gaza. And the UN confirms this here. The first wave is Hamas commandos. The second wave is regular Hamas members and other military organiz paramilitary organizations that joined the operation. And then the third wave of armed elements and unarmed individuals entering from Gaza into Israel. That means civilians. Yeah. That means civilians. Um, unarmed elements can be anything that carries a gun, but uh, especially unarmed individuals means civilians. Civilians from Gaza also joined in on the attack and uh so the, once the first wave of uh, hamas commandos breached the fences and opened the gates into israel 
uh, first the regular fighters and the regular terrorists, and then uh, the civilians, also terrorists, entered and participated. Um, attacks took place over hours. Some remained in there for several days. They came with high caliber and military grade weapons and equipment ranging from rocket propelled grenades, automatic rifles, uh, M16s or Kalashnikovs, ample ammunition, grenades, explosives, flammable substances and restraints, including zip ties. There were people who from the beginning uh, said things like, oh, look, that scene looks burned. But which Hamas member has helicopters? They can't burn. They can burn vehicles. They can burn people. This is, it's clear. They only have guns. They only have pistols and sticks. It's clear that a, an IDF helicopter came in and, uh, and shot these people and fired rockets and so on. These people were people who said that kind of stuff from the beginning, including, but not limited to, uh, that um, scumbag Syrian girl, Jackson Hinkle, Jake Shields, Suleiman Ahmed, and all the other Hamas apologists, terror apologists, uh, people, um, are not only stupid and ignorant, if we are to take them as reliable people or as trustworthy people, they're also, um, they're actually, actually liars and terrorist apologists because we have seen from the very, very first day when the attacks happened and when Hamas was broadcasting it, that Hamas members went into uh, Israel and they were firing um, with RPGs. They were firing rockets at vehicles. They were firing rockets at homes, into crowds, throwing grenades, and so on. And um, rocket-propelled grenades, other flammable substances, all of these things can burn people to death, and so on. And can burn vehicles and homes. Approximately 1,200 individuals were left dead uh, certain places like Kibbutz Beri reportedly losing over 10% of the population. I want to say just one thing uh, again when I have the chance again and again, which is that uh, places like these, Kibbutz Beri, are civilian communities that are very close to the border, that are like, uh, I don't know, one, two kilometers or five kilometers and so on to the, to the border. Uh, walking distance, very short driving distance. And these communities, were built by uh, by Zionists, by Jews. They were not taken from these other people. They, the places were empty. And the people who lived there, and especially who lived there before October 7, were mostly uh, people who were the greatest leftist peace activist people in Israel. Many of them, uh, Kibbutz Beri and uh, other places like Kibbutz Kisufim, where I went to, to visit, uh, in places like Raim and other places. Th these communities were communities that constantly helped Gazans, including uh, bringing them food, giving them gifts, taking their kids and taking them to the hospital, uh, always looking out for them and so on. These were the most helpful communities, the most peace activist communities that did whatever they could to help Gazans. On October 7, they were the first to be attacked and brutally massacred and raped and tortured and taken hostage. It didn't matter what they did. It didn't matter how helpful and how good they were. They were the first to be killed in the most brutal ways. So it doesn't really matter if you are an anti-Zionist or um, a, a peace activist and all of that. It doesn't matter to them at all. If, you're, if you stand in the way, if they see you, you are dead. That's it. They killed Muslims inside Israel. They killed Arabs inside Israel, and there is a video of them uh, putting in putting a, an Arab Muslim on the ground, uh, tying his hands, possibly later killing him, um, and basically insulting him. And he's like, "Oh, by Allah!" And the guy says, "Shut up! Don't talk about Allah. You're a traitor. You work for these dogs." Uh, that's what he says. That's how they operated. 134 individuals remain in captivity in Gaza. Some hostages are or are presumed to be dead. 
Stakeholders were material reviewed by the mission team describe an indiscriminate campaign to kill. An indiscriminate campaign to kill inflict suffering and abduct the, the maximum number possible of men, women and children, soldiers and civilians alike in the minimum possible amount of time. People were shot, often at close range, burned alive in their homes as they tried to hide in their safe rooms, gunned down or killed by grenades in bomb shelters where they sought refuge and hunted down at the Nova Music Festival site. Hunted down. As well as in the fields and roads adjacent to the Nova Music Festival ground. Other violations included sexual violence, abduction of hostages and corpses, the public display of captives, both dead and alive, the mutilation of corpses, including decapitation, and the looting and destruction of civilian property. This is the Islamic resistance movement fighting for freedom, fighting the occupation. Uh, difficulties, they couldn't visit lots of the sites. Many things came in between. Additional challenges, erroneous interpretations of the state of bodies. Um, so some things they had to correct, some things were misidentified, misinterpreted, uh, and so on. Access to survivors, victims, more challenges, more challenges, more challenges, more and more and more challenges. Uh, some forensic evidence is of poor quality or is limited, which uh, provided uh, difficulties. Um, okay, I will go over these and then I'll come to the to the detailed findings of the locations in a little bit. If I have another note here to take, in fact, let me let me check. I think I took a few screenshots earlier or yesterday when I was reading through this whole thing and I made a few highlights on my phone. Let me see if there's anything that I can quickly see here. Mission team, credible information. What is here at 57? Okay, this is where the, where the details start. Okay. Intrinsic challenges faced by national authorities as well as those encountered by the mission team impacted the gathering analysis and verification of information on conflict-related sexual violence and so on and so on. More comprehensive assessment of the occurrence uh, needs to be done with a full-fledged investigation. Now, findings. findings <clears throat> before I continue before I get into the actual findings call of Kedora said hello AP have you seen the debate between Rabbi Shmuley and Norman Finkelstein on Piers Morgan if so what did you think of it I only saw a little bit of it didn't watch the whole thing through uh, Norman Finkelstein is a is a fraud Rabbi Shmuley was not good in that interview he was too excited and got distracted all the time and said a few things that weren't entirely accurate. And I don't know. Norman Finkelstein is, uh, he says, he speaks so much nonsense that Rabbi Shmuley could easily jump on it, you know, bust him on, but he spent too much time attacking the guy. <laughs> and he also fell for some manipulation or even some some misdirection by Piers Morgan. Like Piers Morgan, uh, Piers Morgan's first question to Rabbi Shmuley was was like, uh, "You said on Twitter that Norman Finkelstein is a is a uh, is a disgusting fraud, self hating this and this and that. Uh, do you think this is the right way to conduct uh, a debate?" Then Rabbi Shmuley answered the question why he thinks uh, Norman Finkelstein is a fraud. Then Piers Morgan said, "Okay, but I don't know why you are attacking him because my question was actually about uh, the situation in Gaza." No, that's not what the question was. This question was specifically about why Rabbi Shmuley thinks this way about, uh, about Norman Finkelstein. So Piers Morgan is a, is a terrible host with these debates. And Rabbi Shmuley kind of got misled by Piers Morgan's terrible hosting qualities. But yeah, I didn't watch the whole thing. And it was very much a shouting match too. So that's the, that's the one issue. Um, John Choi said, Israel is a beacon of light in the darkness that is the Middle East. Am Israel Chai. Indeed, Am Israel Chai. 
Blue Moon, conflict-related sexual violence. Nope, most humans do not deal with conflict like that. Uh, for example, Israel, USA, it's Muslim way to deal with conflict. Misha Margolin said, if you come to Israel again, it would be cool to make a fan meetup. I have friends who's a, I have a friend who's a fan and could tell about this experience as a soldier in Gaza. It would be very nice to do that. Uh, we did think about doing a fan meetup. And David said, hey, if anyone wants to meet up, let us know and stuff like that. Um, and and we, I thought we could do it. But once we arrived there, I realized how uh, how much I underestimated the amount of time that things would take there. We barely had time for anything. I was running around all the time, barely sleeping, uh, going to bed very late, exhausted, waking up in the morning, immediately uh, getting ready and running somewhere. It was quite a struggle. I should have gone for a longer time. I need to go back sometime in the future. ES1002, I dare Daniel to say rave prostitute to Shani's parents. Daniel, I don't want to say anything right now. Stefan the Pelted, Sophia, entire tribe was murdered and she was raped. Guess where the jihadis got their idea of October 7th from? You could make a comparison video on this. Good idea. Gnome MKW, have you heard about Vivian Silver? Worth a look. Who's Vivian Silver? Vivian Silver, a Canadian Israeli peace activist. Um, haven't. We'll check. We'll see. Wait, is that the one who was um, in her old age trying to help people? She was a peace activist who was killed on October 7th. Okay, I need to. Need to check that out. Thank you. Pro note said to the last prophet, bring us salvation. Inshallah. I will shall. I shall soon. I shall very, very soon. Namco. AP, thank you for standing by Israel with such passion. Please don't let your enemies fill you with hate. Our people have faced these challenges for hundreds of years. Keep the light and love. Thank you. I appreciate that. Very, very much. I stand with Israel. I stand with Israelis. Especially right now now and people can say whatever the hell they want about that and say oh it's just because the zionists are paying because it's, it's money it's a conspiracy they hired you none of that is happening in the real world especially after going there i i i would I, i'm i'm completely with israel here against these animals these barbarians findings on Conflict-related sexual violence. <clears throat> All right, let's get to the findings. The Nova Music Festival, an outdoor event in an open field about five kilometers from the Gaza perimeter fence, attracted around 3,500 attendees mainly young individuals. Information reviewed by the mission team indicates that the festival was a site of grave violations including brutal mass murders, with several hundreds of bodies recovered from the site, in addition to many abductions. Bodies were also found with extensive burn damage. Based on the examination of available information, including credible statements by eyewitnesses, there are reasonable grounds to believe that multiple incidents of rape including gang rape, occurred in and around the Nova festival site during the October 7 attacks. Credible information was obtained regarding multiple incidents whereby victims were subjected to rape and then killed. Raped and killed. There's lots of circumstantial evidence and witness accounts that describe this. And keep in mind, this is not a report written by random people who just went there and listened to a bunch of people. This is a report written by, uh, made up of a team of, um, I believe, nine experts on sexual violence and other UN members. There are further accounts of individuals who witnessed at least two incidents of rape of corpses of women. At least two incidents of rape of corpses of women. 
Do you hear that? A rape of corpses of women. Necrophilia. We have videos, big coincidence, by Hamas members after taking, after uh, being in Israeli police um, uh, after being captured by, by the Israeli police, admitting to doing specifically that. Specifically that. Let's see. they became animals it's a thing a person doesn't do there it is beheading people having sex with dead bodies meaning the body of a dead woman it's a body it's not humans that do that and things like that happened yes this guy uh this guy is describing other hamas members doing that he is a hamas member captured from october 7. he describes other hamas members as uh having sex with dead bodies raping dead bodies there's no reason to believe that this guy also didn't participate in that no matter if this guy um is completely compliant and talks about it all or not he was part of the attack at least two incidents of rape of corpses of women it's quite understandable that this is what these uh sick disgusting maggots these animals do considering that they come from a group of people and a place where um they treat their women like garbage while also covering them up and repressing their sexuality uh, or repressing the women while being told themselves that if they are in war, they can take a bunch of sex slaves. And if they die, they can go and have uh, sex with a bunch of dedicated, um, wonderful sex dolls made for them by Allah. With all that, with all that pressure that they have, it's of course understandable that these maggots would, um, after attacking on October 7, also end up raping dead bodies, raping the corpses of women. You know, um, there is just one thing that Netanyahu said and that people got outraged about because they don't understand what it is. And one thing that uh, the Jews and even Christians who are familiar with the Bible 
may understand, but this is why things are said like, remember what Amalek did to you. Remember what Amalek did to you. Remember what Amalek did to you. Never forget. Other credible sources at the Nova Music Festival site described seeing multiple murdered individuals, mostly women, whose bodies were found naked from the waist down, some totally naked, with some gunshots in the head and or tied, including with their hands bound behind their backs and tied to structures such as trees or poles. Remember what Amalek did to you. Road 232 and other escape routes. Faced with the attacks, Nova Music Festival goers and other residents reportedly fled along various escape routes, including Road 232 and the surrounding fields. Along Road 232, numerous bodies with severe injuries, such as multiple gunshot wounds and destructive burn damage were found. including in and around damaged or burned vehicles, as well as piled in several bomb shelters. I feel like since this stream is going very graphically into these things anyway, I would just put on screen all the atrocities, some of which I have never even shown, captured on camera, but the thing is, when I when I do that, uh, YouTube puts a severe restriction on the video, and it ends up just being um, pressured and censored, and then it defeats the entire purpose of people um, seeing this live stream and being exposed to this information. But I am thinking at this point of just um, of simply making a big compilation although Israel doesn't want to do that, making a big compilation of everything that I have, everything that I have gathered, everything that I have seen, to put them into one big film and just publish them for everyone to see. Israel, Netanyahu, I think, had such a plan, but lots of people in Israel said, don't do it, for many different reasons, including the... The, the psychological aspects and the the mood the motive the motivation the moral of Israeli society but I think we are way past that people need to see Ahmed Fadal said you're calling Palestinians Amalek shame on you I'm not calling Palestinians Amalek unless you are implying here that all Palestinians are like this unless you're implying that the Palestinians in general are like Hamas and that they are uh, rapists, murderers, that they commit massacres, that they rape dead bodies. If that's what you are thinking, then that might be your problem. It's not what I am thinking, or not entirely. Although there is a significant population that supports these things and these people. I'm calling Hamas, and to be honest, anyone who supports them, Amalek. Yes, they are Amalek. And I'm saying, remember what Amalek did to you. And whatever you can take from that. Stop gaslighting people, you piece of shit. There are reasonable grounds to believe that sexual violence occurred on and around Road 232. Credible information based on corroborating witness accounts described an incident involving the rape of two women. The mission team received other accounts of rape, including gang rape, which could not be verified during the time provided and would require further investigation. Along this road, several bodies were found with genital injuries, along with injuries to other body parts. Discernible patterns of genital mutilation could not be verified at this, at this time, but warrant future investigation. So patterns of genital mutilation could not be verified but require further investigation, although there were several bodies found with genital injuries and with other injuries to other body parts. 
Many bodies along Road 232 also suffered destructive burn damage. And conclusions as to conflict-related sexual violence, um, including genital mutilation, uh, related to these incidents could not be drawn. Okay. The mission team was also uh, able to ascertain that multiple bodies of women and a few men, multiple bodies of women and a few men, were found totally or partially naked or with their clothes torn, including some bound and or attached to structures, which through circumstantial, though circumstantial, may be indicative of some forms of sexual violence. This is a very careful legal approach here. There's a pattern of repeatedly um, victims here being um, stripped half naked or completely naked and uh, with their hands tied behind their backs and attached to structures. And it looks like they, they did that because they sexually abused, they raped, um, these victims, but this is called circumstantial evidence. So it needs to be further investigated. It's pretty clear to me, unless of course they, um, they are simply doing this to humiliate their victims, the Jews, the Israelis by stripping them completely naked and then attaching them or tying them to trees or poles and then just leave them there. But you know what? It doesn't even matter. In any case, whether they strip these people naked and then tie them up and only attach them to a pole, or if they do that and then rape them, it's all the same. These are animals. And they all, all of them, every single one of them, needs to be dealt with in the severest ways. There should be no negotiations. There should be no future for these people, for Hamas and all the others who participated. Nova Music Festival goers also attempted to escape. So, okay, Kibbutz Reim. Nova Music Festival goers also attempted to escape to the south and sought shelter in and around Kibbutz Reim, about two kilometers southwest of the Nova Music Festival site. There are reasonable grounds to believe that sexual violence occurred in Kibbutz Reim, including rape. This includes the rape of a woman outside of a bomb shelter at the entrance of Kibbutz Reim which was corroborated by witness testimonies and digital material. Not just witness testimonies, also digital material. Um, yeah, no, so what that means is, uh, what that means is basically, yeah, so there's a pattern of them repeatedly killing uh, Israeli civilians by stripping them fully naked, tying their hands behind their backs and attaching them to trees or poles and then killing them. And that pattern implies that there is sexual violence. But in my opinion, it doesn't matter if there's, if, if they, if they actually, if there's full fledged rape as a result of that, or if they're just doing that and leaving them and killing them. I think it's all the same. X something said, AP, what do you think about people switching on you? You mean you mean uh, turning against me because uh, because of these things? Uh, screw them. That's what I would say. I would say... Get the hell out of here! Um, within the kibbutz itself, in, on, in one area close to the entrance, the bodies of at least two women were found inside a home on the floor and naked with gunshot wounds to their heads. Yeah, this is again, one of those things. You can try as hard as possible to defend your Islamist terrorist bastards here. Why is there a repeated pattern now fully established and confirmed by the UN team 
of Hamas members and other Gazan terrorists going and stripping women naked and shooting them in the head. What exactly is the purpose here? And of course, these are just to uh, highlight how barbaric, how messed up, how disgusting, how inhuman, and how undeserving of any mercy these people are. It's already enough that they go into civilian pub, civilian uh, towns, into homes, and target and kill random people. They claimed at the very beginning, and they still claim, that this was an attack on military targets. It was not. They overwhelmingly attacked civilians. They attacked civilian communities. They killed people in their homes. They killed people, 300, over 300 people, close to 400 people on a, uh, at a festival and captured them. That was not a military target. They landed there. There is uh, apparently now reason to believe that they were actually really not aware of the uh, Ray Music Festival, the Nova Music Festival that was taking place. They thought they were going to land on a uh, on a on a on a uh, on an empty field and attack the civilian communities and from there on uh, use them as, as 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 base and go further into Israel. But they were surprised when they landed to find that there is a music festival happening on that field. So what they did, of course, was not to say, "Oh, there are a bunch of civilians here. We shouldn't. We should get out of here." No, what they did was they thought, perfect, perfect opportunity. Thousands of civilians gathered in a, in a place, in one place, all unsuspecting. It's perfect for us to just go in, the, in there and massacre people, take them captive, rape them, and so on. Of course, there are other theories that they uh, that they actually knew about the festival, that they were informed about it, but they didn't seem very very well prepared on that day, in terms of uh, finding their way and all that. Uh, in any case, none of it makes uh, makes it better or worse for them. In the end, they didn't hold back; they just killed and killed and killed and killed and killed and raped and tortured and abducted and so on but if it's if it's true that they didn't know about the music festival then there there is an irony that some people brought up when i was in israel which is that um the people at the music festival lots of them actually heroically fought the terrorists when they came jumped on them took their guns tried to shoot at them were shot as a result and so on lots of these people uh so Hamas wasted or lost a lot of time there attacking that place. But the, all the time that they spent at the Nova Music Festival site hindered them from going further into Israel and causing even more devastation and massacre inside Israel. On one hand, so many people, so many innocent people were killed by these bastards, by these animals. On the other hand, those people pre uh, prevented Hamas from going further into Israel and spreading the massacre inside Israel. But in any case, all of these terrorists, all of these maggots deserve to be squashed and killed. Or brought to justice. Uh, we are the media Israel. AP, Palestinians want to come back working in Israel. How can we trust them? I don't want to say anything about this. Uh, lots of people don't know that uh, thousands of Gazans were going into Israel every day to go and work in Israel to make a living there. They act like, oh, no, Gazans were like behind this fence and they were treated like animals and they couldn't get out. No, they were going in there and they were working every day. And there is uh, a lot of evidence that people who did work there provided a lot of assistance in the attacks. I don't know what to tell you. I can't say anything about that.
Messianic apostate, when people say Gaza is an opening in prison, what they really mean is that there is a strict border control enforced by Israel and Egypt. Yeah, people don't realize that uh, that, the, that, the, that the blockade was implemented with Israeli-Egyptian collaboration. It wasn't just Israel, uh, because Israel is such a genocidal state. It was Egypt and Israel together um, instating a blockade and keeping that blockade up. And also, by the way, a, a detail that people just don't want to go into. Also, by the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank. The Palestinian Authority in the West Bank, Fatah, under the leadership of Mahmoud Abbas, they also implemented blockades or approved of blockades against uh, against Hamas, against Gaza. And now they are acting like they had nothing to do with any of this, and it was just Israel that is like genocidal apartheid and whatever it is. These three parties did these things together. They blockaded Gaza because Hamas is a terrorist organization that took over and decided that there is that there is no peace process and that they will take all of Israel and get rid of all the Jews. Now they all just blame Israel. That's it, of course. Not that there is any anything to blame Israel for. Not not that the, Israel is guilty of anything. Of course they should put a blockade. On it. They should have put a bl bigger blockade on it. They should have taken Gaza over after the first instance of Hamas firing rockets, of Hamas taking over and firing rockets. They shouldn't have waited this long. Unfortunately, Benjamin Netanyahu had a had a policy of appeasing Hamas in the hopes of reducing terrorist attacks, which was criticized quite often. And people now blame that policy for what happened on October 7. But whatever. Witness testimony gathered for this area is consistent with possible sexual violence. However, these could not be verified in the time provided and would require further investigation. Kibbutz Beri is one of the places with a lot of pretty bad footage, pretty ugly footage. Um, Kibbutz Beri is located within the Gaza periphery along Road 232. Interviews of survivors of the attack and intervening first responders alongside reviewed audiovisual material attested that the kibbutz was severely affected by the October 7 attacks, with fighting spanning over the course of two days. The kibbutz suffered a significant number of casualties, with reportedly over 10% of its population killed including children, and some 50 people taken hostage to Gaza during the attacks. The location had been identified as a priority for the mission team due to serious reports of conflict-related sexual violence. The mission team conducted a site visit to Beri and witnessed firsthand the magnitude of destruction within the kibbutz with rows of houses burned, riddled with bullets, and many reduced to rubble. The mission team examined several allegations of sexual violence. It must be noted that witnesses and sources with whom the mission team engaged adopted over time an increasingly cautious and circumspect approach regarding past accounts, including in some cases retracting statements made previously. Some also stated to the mission team that they no longer felt confident in their recollections of other assertions that had appeared in the media. This is a pattern that you can find repeatedly in extremely traumatic events, especially ones of this, of this magnitude that affected a community of initial accounts given or later accounts added or previous accounts taken back and said, I'm not, I'm not sure anymore about that, and so on. And then you have people who come in and say, oh, look, they say whatever they want, they can't be relied upon. No, this is called trauma. This is called severe, severe, severe PTSD. And a collective distortion of people's memory for what they went through. We have so many, so many videos of this community being brutally attacked, of Hamas walking through the civilian homes and shooting into them. 
shooting on sight, firing rockets from the distance, throwing grenades into their homes, and so on. The people living there have no confidence anymore in people who come to visit from the outside. Imagine living there. Imagine your, your, your community, your home was attacked like that. How are you supposed to trust people, strangers anymore? How are you supposed to feel at peace and safe when you see somebody walk outside your home on the street anymore? I talked to somebody when I was um, in Israel and I only recorded her, her voice when she spoke to me who grew up in a settlement that was a re-established Jewish settlement surrounded by Palestinians who harassed them repeatedly. Their home was set on fire when she was 13 years old by Molotovs thrown over the fence. And when she was 15, their next door neighbor, um, their, the, 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 the family home next door was broken into by somebody who climbed over the fence at night. And he went in there, um, cutting the throats and killing almost all family members. Upon which they had to leave and come back after a while. Imagine how that traumatizes you. At least two of the allegations of sexual violence previously reported were determined by the mission team to be unfounded due to either new superseding information or inconsistency in the information gathered, including first responder testimonies, photographic evidence, and other information. These included the allegation of a pregnant woman whose womb had reportedly been ripped open before she was killed. So they say that this uh, is considered unfounded and probably did not happen. That is good. With her feet stabbed while still inside her, they say this is likely unfounded. That is good. Another such account was the interpretation initially made of the body of a girl found separated from the rest of her family, naked from the waist down. It was determined by the mission team that the crime scene had been altered by a bomb squad and the bodies moved, explaining the separation of the body of the girl from the rest of her family. This is one of the things that... People now say, why were, why were they not more careful in their operations? But it was the middle of a, of a war while, people, while terrorists are still in there. So a bomb squad moved the body, uh, pro probably had to be done, um, which is why it's explained. However, of course, it's not entirely, uh, it, it is still the case that she was naked from the waist down. Allegations of objects found inserted in female genital organs also could not be verified by the mission team, due in large part to the limited availability and low quality of imagery. Okay. Full-fledged information uh, investigation will follow. The mission team received credible information about bodies found naked and or tied, and in one case gagged, in some of the kibbutzes destroyed houses and their surroundings. Some say this is a this was a military operation, that October 7 was a military operation. Does this sound like a military operation to these bastards? Going into people's homes, stripping them naked, tying them up, gagging them, and then killing them. While verification of sexual violence against these victims was not possible, Circumstantial evidence, notably the pattern of female victims found undressed and bound, may be indicative of some forms of sexual violence. What this basically means is that it is very likely that this that they were sexually abusing the female victims that were found repeatedly undressed and tied and killed. Overall, the mission team was unable to establish whether sexual violence occurred in Kibbutz Beiri. Further investigations may determine whether incidents of sexual violence occurred. So there is a pattern, but they need more information and further investigation. Kibbutz Kfar Aza, during the attacks on Kibbutz Kfar Aza, located about three kilometers from the Gaza perimeter fence, approximately 50 residents out of its population of around 700 were killed. 
when hundreds of militants entered the kibbutz armed with military grade weaponry most killings were reported to have occurred in the 12 hours before the idf were deployed to the area 12 hours before the idf were deployed to the area dozens of houses were burned fighting between militants and the idf forces in and around the kibbutz was reported to have ended only on october 10 complicating the recovery of bodies the mission team collected information from first responders who reported discovering bodies of women naked with their hands tied behind their backs and gunshot wounds to the head now here's something interesting there are some uh, of these uh, terrorist supporters again who will say things like oh you can't trust the first responders they're just biased israelis the report already established multiple instances or a pattern of victims in different locations being stripped naked especially women and their hands tied behind their backs and their and gunshots in their heads or tied to structures and then killed this way so when they go and hear such accounts from first responders this is pretty much a um corroborating evidence they are presenting something which they themselves can already independently confirm so they don't have to trust the first responders anymore they already know that this is indeed a thing and that they are most likely not making it up while verification of sexual violence against these victims was not possible at this point available circumstantial information notably the here it is a recurring pattern of female victims found undressed bound and shot again and again again and again female victims found undressed stripped naked bound and shot indicates that sexual violence including potential sexualized torture or cruel inhuman and degrading treatment may have occurred this is the islamic resistance movement islamic resistance movement no one walter's strong message on the 47th minute and great work i'll have to check it out i don't know what i said um thank you thank you rachel s take care of yourself ap we need you well remember israel does not fear a long road we are the people of eternity they cannot ever win i see the resilience and the strength and the family aspect of israeli and jewish society and I, 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 I have faith in that. It's just that the world is filled with these, with these animals. You see what they can do. I stand with you fully, wholeheartedly. Katheus said, as an atheist, sometimes I feel sad there is no hell for such monsters to go. Lauren Plitt, an attack on Jews similar to this happened in Algeria, 1934 Constantine riots. Newspaper reports say breasts were cut off, etc. I, yeah, I'm, I'm aware. Um, one of many pogroms against Jewish people. DKDKDS made a super chat of 10 euros. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Ryan Gosling gifted one membership. Thank you. Jens Philip Hermann says Hamas, Orcs of Morgoth, or even worse. There's nothing even in these these stories as terrible as these people who will raise their children explicitly to fight and kill the Jews, then cut their lives very short and bring them out there, put them into a war zone let their children die, then use their children as propaganda tool to say that those people are killing us, while at the same time going over the fence to those people 
and doing all kinds of unthinkable atrocities to those people. There is a deep sickness, a deep, deep sickness that Hamas and other groups in that place uh, foster and push and keep alive. There is, there should be no compromise. There is no future for these people, for those organizations and what they do. Remember what Amalek did to you. Christina says, at times Israel reminds me of Dawah. They brainwash their citizens to believe that Islam is peaceful and lie about what Islam actually teaches. I still have my reservations about how Israel handles the situation with, with Islam. But the thing is, uh, Israel, as much as they try to detach, as much as they try to detach Islam from Hamas and Islamic extremism, and as much as I disagree with that, there is something that works, which is the Israeli Arab Muslim population is not remotely as messed up as the, as the population on the other side. Yeah. Uh, DKS says, I have a question about the trees and stones prophecy. Not a single Muslim who is dead is in Jannah, correct? They are in a lobby waiting for the day of judgment. So in order to get to heaven, all Jews must die. Uh, yeah, so the, the belief is that all dead people, they are basically um, waiting in the grave, which may be um, where they may be subject to questioning and torturing or simply a very nice uh, vacation until the day of judgment, the day of rising comes and everyone is risen up and judged and then they go to their designated places to heaven or hell. That's the Islamic belief. And yes, the Islamic belief, according to Muhammad's prophecy, is that before that day comes, before the day of judgment comes, um, the, the Jews will be fought and killed. That's what the prophecy says. I always, every single time, especially during these times when lots of people, because of this conflict, come in, uh, have people who come in and who have never heard of that or who can't believe that that is an actual thing, but this is a very reliable, very authentic, very well-known narrative in uh, Islamic sources, in Sunni sources, and Muslims around the world believe in this. So, for those again here, Sahih Muslim, I learned this when I was a little child. Muslims around the world learn this and repeat this. The last hour would not come unless the Muslims will fight against the Jews and the Muslims would kill them until the Jews would hide behind a stone or a tree. And a stone or a tree would say, Muslim, O servant of Allah, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. But the, the tree Kargat would not say, for it is the tree of the Jews. So yes, you're right. It says uh, the last hour. What it actually says is the hour. Uh, the hour would not come unless Muslims will fight against the Jews. And the hour always refers to the day of judgment when everyone is risen and judged. This is the problem. This here is the problem. Nothing else. This here is the problem. It's the it's the it's the religion and everything it teaches. All these perversions. Uh, Paradisus Infernalis says, on 710, Israel saw that no other modern democracy saw what no other modern democracy has seen, what no one should ever experience. Second horror came when the world reacted how it reacted. Hard to believe, hard to continue. You are the voice that helps heal. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm just... It, it's hard sometimes to predict how messed up people are. You can go back and uh, look at my live stream and how I reacted to it initially and what I tweeted. I was actually under the delusion and false uh, assumption when October 7 happened that, yeah, this is it. After this, they won't be able to play the victim anymore. They won't be able to convince uh, people around the world that they are the victim. They won't be able to play the same game anymore. It's over now. They have proven to everyone that they are 
or they have they have damaged their reputation and their image forever and even those who stood with them will now have to dissociate themselves from them like people can't possibly stand behind this that's what i thought on that day but that was true for maybe one or two days and then it changed and people started accusing israel and describing the attacking side as the victim once again <laughs> and especially after especially after going to israel that's why on my way back with with david i'm talking to him and i said i i uh, it's 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 incredible for me i spent this time in israel and these people are amazing and there is it's just it's insane that people would malign these people for the way they are because the way they are is better than any any society i've been in it's almost like there's something something greater something i don't know something beyond just regular feelings and natural human uh responses and all of that behind the hate against jews and israel feels like it in the moment bar mustel said read ori ansbacher shall have it pass fogel family i will see let's continue <clears throat> nahal oz military base um nahal oz military base has base operated as a hub for signals intelligence and monitoring of the gaza perimeter fence a significant number of male and female soldiers stationed in the space were killed in the october 7 attacks seven young women undertaking their mandatory military service were abducted from nahal oz military base and taken to gaza isn't this the one where everyone was everyone stationed on that day was killed or was that um was that a different one let's see now how was oh no these are two different places so um there is the what is this there is the Reim military base no outside of the Reim army base according to one report all of the soldiers at the base were killed or captured and then there is the Nahal Oz okay okay um the mission team reviewed reports of uh, reports concerning a case of rape which could not be verified at this point it also rev reviewed reports of sexual violence including one case of genital mutilation of one male soldier and several female soldiers during the attack on the military base which likewise could not be established the photos from the identification process of 41 killed soldiers from nahal oz military base were scrutinized by the mission team after excluding corpses with destructive burn damage and one corpse with very limited photos the photos of 20 men and nine women remain for analysis. Among these soldiers, while the forensic analysis reviewed injuries to intimate body parts, no discernible pattern of targeted injuries to intimate body parts could be identified in either sex. Okay, so no discernible pattern could be identified. Specifically, seven soldiers did exhibit gunshot wounds around the genitalia and or buttocks though along with multiple gunshots wounds to other body parts such as the trunk and legs as such the review was inconclusive with regards to patterns of genital mutilation one discernible pattern emerged 24 out of 29 soldiers displayed apparent often multiple gunshot wounds to the head i would think it would be very difficult to uh, even for these terrorists animals to go and try to extensively um do the very same things that they did to these others to people inside a military base but 
gunshot wounds around the genitalia and or buttocks, but also other parts like trunks and legs. Um, uh, con inconclusive, inconclusive with regards to patterns of genital mutilation, a discernible pattern emerged that uh, 24 out of 29 soldiers displayed had multiple gunshot wounds to the head. I, I, I just want to describe one thing, two images that I that I know from this base and the other place in Reim, uh, where they took um, they took soldiers with them. No, one actually one is from the military base itself, where they are filming themselves uh, stomping on the dead body of a of a of a soldier repeatedly and just having fun with the dead body of a soldier um, just hitting the head of the soldier repeatedly shooting at the head stomping and also sorry to speak it out um but basically putting the the guns into the into the for into the deformed and shot in face of a soldier and mutilating it uh and another instance of is of is of a soldier taken back to gaza with uh by these hamas terrorists and then laid down into the middle of a street among cheering dozens of uh regular gazan civilians who then together start kicking and beating and mutilating that body in the middle of the street Okay, two, sexual violence against hostages in Gaza, hostages taken to Gaza. Mosh Cohen says, been a while, AP, hope you're doing well, heard you were in Israel, hope you had a great visit, and inshallah, many more to come. Thanks for everything. Hey, it's good to see you here. How is everything going? Are you still on the ground in the field? Are you fighting? Hope everything is well. It's very, very nice to see you here. And thank you for whatever you do. Um, let's see, let's see. Hamas teaches children to sing about wanting to die. Kids are dying everywhere. When Islamists go on TV and say men and women, do they include Jews in that statement? See, many thanks to you, Mrs. Apostate. I'm sure the hostages have been passed off to other groups and UNRWA people. Some of the hostages were taken in uh, in, in the homes, uh, were, were kept inside the homes of actual UNRWA employees. <laughs> Has been established and proven. Others were kept in regular civilian homes. Of course, you could now say that they that those civilians were forced to keep them there because Hamas basically forced them to keep them there. But civilians are in on it. Lots of them. <clears throat> Uh, Islam full of bumboith, no such thing as Palestinian kids. I wouldn't say that. Everyone is just humans. Um, okay. Apostle Robert, thanks from France. Thank you. Okay. Sexual violence against hostages taken to Gaza. The mission team reviewed incidents of alleged sexual violence related to hostages in Gaza. Based on the first-hand accounts of released hostages, the mission team received clear and convincing information. There it is. This here is very, very crucial. Let's go back um, to where this is addressed. Clear and convincing clear and convincing. Let's see what the report says in the beginning here. So, uh, although the primary standard of proof in this report is one of reasonable grounds to believe, there have been occasions where more information has supported a finding of fact, and the overall finding has therefore been stated to be established at the level of clear and convincing informations. information. United Nations reporting has used a 
clear and convincing standard, and although there is no single definition of the term, it is generally agreed that clear and convincing information or evidence rises above reasonable grounds to believe, yet falls below, below um, beyond a reasonable doubt. So anything that is described as clear and convincing is stronger than in confidence than anything that I read so far here. They're almost sure. The mission team reviewed incidents of alleged sexual violence related to hostages in Gaza based on the first-hand accounts of released hostages. The mission team received clear and convincing information that sexual violence, including a rape, sexualized torture, and cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment occurred against some women and children during their time in captivity and has reasonable grounds to believe that this violence may be ongoing. So here are two things to unpack. First off, these experts, based on first-hand accounts, um, have clear and convincing information. So they're pretty much sure the only thing left is basically a uh, court proceedings and um, a, a systematic analysis of all of the evidence. But they're sure that sexual violence, including rape, sexualized torture, and cruel, uh, inhuman and degrading treatment occurred against some women and children during their time in captivity in Gaza. Yes. This is what the UN team here concludes and says. That the Hamas bastards and the others sexually abused, so raped, sexually tortured, and otherwise treated in cruel, inhuman, and degrading ways, women and children that they captured and brought to Gaza. And further, based on this information, they have reasonable grounds to believe that this violence may be ongoing. So since they know that lots of the women and children saved and uh, brought back experienced rape and sexual torture and other things during their time in Gaza, they therefore think it is safe to assume that those captives who are still held in Gaza, dead or alive, may still be sexually assaulted, tortured, and otherwise treated in brutal and inhuman ways by Hamas and other parties. This is why they, um, this is why this woman in charge urged um israel to say i understand the point but please make sure to do at least a temporary ceasefire and get all the hostages out of there because they may be getting raped and sexually tortured and otherwise mistreated as we speak and i believe i saw uh, an update from the hostages forum which we visited when we were there uh, as soon as the report came out they they actually um, made a statement and pressured the government to get all the hostages out now and not wait any longer mm. and I understand that these are families of hostages that are still there. Lots of the people who work there are, 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 are um, siblings or children or parents or relatives, friends of the hostages. And they are at the forefront of campaigning for the release of the hostages. And they now want them out as soon as possible, no matter what happens. Of course, everyone still wants Hamas to be destroyed afterward. That's what should be happening. Based on first-hand accounts of released hostages, there are reasonable grounds to believe that female hostages were also subjected to other forms of sexual violence. OK. 
I don't understand this part entirely. So, uh, released hostages uh, received clear and convincing information that sexual violence, including rape, sexualized torture, and other forms of cruel, inhuman, and in 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 degrading treatment occurred against some women and children during the time in Gaza in captivity. Based on first-hand accounts of released hostages, there are reasonable grounds to believe that female hostages were also subjected to other forms of sexual violence. What other forms? I don't know. Other findings not linked to specific locations. The mission team also gathered and reviewed information based on photos and videos of October 7 attacks that could not yet be linked to a specific location of the attacks. The mission team was able to determine that at least 100 bodies had destructive burn damage preventing any findings of what may have occurred to those individuals, including any assessment of sexual violence. 100 bodies had destructive burn damage. I saw many of those videos and photos. Rainbow, the God says, show us proof. There is no proof. Um, I'm really, really, really holding back right now. Really holding back right now. You know what? How about um, how about do it for yourself? Go on Hamas dash massacre dot net or go on ten seventh. Dot org 10 seventh no sorry 10 seventh dot com or look for the telegram channel Hamas atrocities or October 7 slaughter look through all of the videos dear uh, terrorist piece of shit look through those videos and then say that again and if you say that again after looking through those videos, then you too, my friend, are Amalek. And thereby I ban you here. In the, in the medi medical legal assessment of available photos and videos, no tangible indications of rape, rape could be identified. Further investigations may alter this assessment in the future. Okay, so from the photos and videos, they couldn't identify tangible indications. Uh, nevertheless, considering the nature of rape, which often does not result in visible injuries, that's why. This possibility cannot be ruled out based solely on the medical legal assessment. Therefore, the mission team concluded that circumstantial indicators, like the position of the corpse and the state of clothing, should also be considered when determining the occurrence of sexual violations, in addition to witness and survivor testimony. In the medical legal assessment undertaken by the mission team of available photos and videos of crime scenes, a few corpses with conspicuously spread legs were observed. These postures could not be adequately explained by, for instance, post-mortem pugilistic posturing, Due to burn damage, uh, postmortem pugilistic posturing is a is this is this posture that dead bodies um, have when they are burned to death because of the shrinking of tissues to because of the heat and muscles and all of that, where the body starts um, going into this this posture of forming hands that come together and legs that are raised uh so that happens when not when a body is burned after they are killed but rather when they are burned to death and there are plenty of um plenty of bodies that are found in this posture which shows that they were burned to death however what they're saying here is that um a few corpses with conspicuously spread legs were observed and their 
their stances, their postures cannot be explained by this phenomenon. The reviewed photos and videos further revealed a minimum of 20 corpses with partially or fully exposed intimate body parts, such as breasts and genitalia, resulting from the absence, displacement, or tearing of clothing. Also, at least 10 distinct corpses displayed indications of bound wrist and or tied legs. These are just from the photos and uh, videos. Okay, yeah. Just from the photos and videos, uh, 20 corpses with partially or fully exposed intimate body parts, such as breasts and genitalia, resulting from the absence, displacement, or tearing of clothes. Also, at least 10 dis distinct corpses displayed indications of bound wrists or tied legs. You know what, um, you know what the thing here is? These Hamas supporters, Islamists, or even others, some of the leftist communists and other people who support Hamas, they see the things that were done. They see the evidence. They hear of the evidence. They read the reports or whatever they, they want to read from it. And they still don't think that this is worthy of condemnation. They still justify what these people did. They still make excuses such as, uh, well, you never talk about what was done to them. Of course, when you treat them badly, they will come and do these and these and these and that and those things to you. This is the sickness of their mind. They think, they think um, under certain circumstances, if some evil was done to a certain population, it is then justified for them to become completely inhuman and enter a civilian population and rape bodies, rape people alive or dead, uh, tie them up, strip them naked, touch them, kill them, burn them, and so on. They think um, they think they, they think it, it depends on the context, on the situation. It can be relatively morally justified to do that to people. And what that implies is that uh, is that you could make accusations about a certain population, right? Like um, that atrocities are committed by that population and you don't have to fully establish and prove that those atrocities are indeed true all you need to do is to uh to believe that those atrocities are committed and then you can justify going into that population and doing all kinds of inhuman things to them like raping them mutilating them burning them alive tying them up and humiliating them and so on, stripping them na naked and so on. This is what, this is the slippery slope. This is the consequence of such a sick system where you justify these atrocities because, well, something bad was done to them so they can also do it to others. It should never be justifiable. Even if it were true that those people were oppressed, which they weren't, nothing like this should be justifiable. If people do that, that means they have a very, very skewed moral compass. And remember what Amalek did to you. Uh, the reviewed photos and videos revealed widespread mutilation of bodies involving both attempted and actual decapitation, numerous gunshot wounds, and various other forms of extensive violence. The medical, le medical legal assessment of available photos and videos revealed multiple corpses with injuries, predominantly gunshot wounds, including to intimate parts such as breasts and genitalia, because in most instances, additional injuries were also seen on other body parts. No discernible pattern of genital mutilation could be established. Given the incomplete overview of evidence at this stage, subsequent investigation, including cross linking of injury patterns with geographical information may provide additional insights. So this is aside from everything that was mentioned before um, in locations that cannot be attributed to a certain place at the moment. Destructive burn damage in at least 100 corpses further impeded the assessment of targeted genital mutilation. Destructive burn damage in 100 corpses. The digital evidence discovered during an independent open source review appeared authentic and unmanipulated. 
While the mission team reviewed extensive digital material depicting a range of egregious vi violations, no digital evidence specifically depicting acts of sexual violence was found in open sources. Yeah, because even Hamas will probably not film themselves raping somebody. They could film themselves beheading and mutilating somebody, but not raping somebody, because that's that's unacceptable to their standard to film it. Of course, you might do it, but you can't film it, right? It's like you can't look at, uh, like women shouldn't be uncovered and shouldn't show themselves outside. Can't look at them, but it's okay if you go in there and rape them and brutally kill them while raping them. Nonetheless, some Beatles GG bet said, I love your videos, but you are just so biased against Muslims, bro. How in the world do you love my videos if you think that something here is biased against Muslims? I don't think it makes sense in any way. And you are lying. Get the hell out of here! And I don't like liars. Uh, the mates are Marxist leftists, all Quran followers. Rainbow keeps making new accounts and joining against what a creep. Just ban the guy. If anyone is a moderator here, just just ban him every single time. Like if if that's how if that's how dumb you are that you waste your time with uh, creating new accounts to just come here and make those stupid comments, those vile comments, then there is no hope anyway. Eric Abgune said, any plans of a stream with Dave Dawood Wahid? Who's Dawood Wahid? Is it David Wood? I don't know who Dawood Wahid is. No. No. Edith Barmat said, hey, Edith, how, how are you doing? I met you in Israel. Yeah, you were there, and we were very helpful. Thank you, AP. You're a glimmer of hope in dark times. Thank you for standing for the truth. You are brave. Thank you so much, Edith. I appreciate it. And thank you again. It was very nice to meet you. Blockfish Blackfish Blues made a super sticker. DKDS said, appreciate your work. Have you tried to get an interview with uh, Pierce Morgan or Jordan Peterson? Have you talked to Michaela Peterson again? I haven't talked to her again. I, I, am, I am in contact with people who are in contact with Pierce Morgan. I th did think about asking them to connect me, but I didn't do it. Still thinking about it. And Jordan Peterson, um, I have indirect contact with him through Gadsad, who I am in contact with, and who recently sent me a very nice email. Um, I need to have him on here again as a guest. Mosh Cohen, hi AP, been a while, mate. Heard you were in Israel and wanted to visit the West Bank. Too bad I didn't know. I could have come with my platoon to escort you to wherever. In the name of all Israelis, thanks. Thank you so much. You thought I wouldn't read your regular chat, but I did. See, nice to see you here, Mosh. Um, <clears throat> honestly, there were several people who offered to uh, go with me to the West Bank because I wanted to go to um, two settlements and to Bethlehem, but um, I didn't have the time to do any of these things. So, and I thought that is lower priority right now there were too many other things to do i really need to go back and do lots of different things sapir uwu said all the hate we get makes us give more love hope <laughs> see you see thank you And contrast that with what you get from these people who are on the other side. Call of Kidora says, why do so many Muslim speakers like Muhammad Hijab say that they are not defending Hamas, yet seem to try and justify all their actions? They are defending Hamas. Uh, Muhammad Hijab just, uh, he does defend Hamas as well. And he only condemns certain aspects of Hamas, he said, when he was forced to say it. Um, yeah. Wait, why are people are discussing about me? Sydney Watson is arguing about me. Hmm. Oh, because she retweeted something that I posted. Okay, anyway. Um, oh, have you guys seen this video here? 
is added, added. Our hatred for the non-Muslims doesn't stop us from being unjust to them. My argument would be it also doesn't stop us from coexisting with them, living in a society with them. But I can be in a land where I lived with live with these people, but yeah. I have hate for them. I don't like them. I say that is at a, at the time that we're living in today is very very hard to claim that imposing onto you, saying that you have to accept the British values. And Muslims are being put in situations where they're asked, "Are you a Muslim first or are you a British first?" Yeah, but these are easy questions to answer. My Muslim first. Like, what's the issue? But that's you not being loyal to the country that you claim to be from. You see, that's what Muslims are now. By saying that statement, you're an, you're, you're 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 a foreigner. <laughs> it's like when you listen to the whole conversation, this guy sounds relatively reasonable in comparison. But the thing is, even he says we hate them, right? So these these guys are like two two uh, Islamist guys. One is a preacher who has a YouTube channel and who is also um, who preaches in a mosque. I, I don't know what his I forgot what his name is. Uh, just disgusting individual. Um, if somebody knows his name, let me know. Um, in the UK, they preach, and they openly say we hate them. We hate the disbelievers. Like they hate they hate non-Muslims, and they're talking about whether you can. Uh, just live among the non-Muslims while hating them or not. And I just want to ask one question to these guys. Why the fuck are you here? Get out. Our hatred for the non-Muslims Our hatred for the non-Muslims doesn't stop us from being unjust to them. My argument would be it also doesn't stop us from coexisting with them living in a society with them but i can be in a land where i lived with live with these people but yeah. i have hate for them i don't like them they hate you but um but lots of people are like no 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 it's not hate they just they just have a different different perspective no they hate you they hate you guys like these they hate you it's not true for every Muslim, just for lots of those who take their Islamic beliefs and values very seriously, or just seriously. It was the same thing with my parents, by the way. Um, we lived in Germany, raised as Muslim. I'm raised as a Muslim. I have good relations um, early on with, with Germans, with non-Muslims. I like them, I thank them. They do fantastic things to me for me and for my family and everything. But my family teaches me at home that we're not supposed to befriend and love them, that we are supposed to dislike and hate them because they are um, they are disbelievers and when push comes to shove, they are allies of one another, all the disbelievers against Muslims. Only Muslims are each other's brothers and uh, friends and all that. The others we cannot trust and we should not trust, no matter how kind they are and so on. Like that's This is not, some, not something surprising to me. It's something that I learned from my parents and from others. And I mean, even my parents at this point, so why would I not condemn them? At least my parents uh, did one good thing, which is that they uh, did take the advice and did fuck off and go to Turkey. Unfortunately, they took me with them <laughs> at that point. Uh, but yeah. <clears throat> Nonetheless, some digital material of circumstantial elements, such as naked or partially naked bodies, may be in indicative of some forms of sexual violence naked or partially naked bodies the mission team took note of the averments of the israeli authorities that some of the incriminating online materials including those specifically depicting acts of sexual violence had been removed or restricted by various platforms or by the offenders themselves 
While it is possible that digital evidence may have been posted and then removed from official channels and social media profiles, possibly due to concerns by the various groups that it may be incriminating, it is the view of the mission team that had clear digital evidence of sexual violence or orders to commit sexual violence been circulated in the, in the mainstream, it would have likely been discovered given the volume of the information posted online and further recirculated, making the removal of all trace of such material unlikely. Yeah, I, I don't think it would be very likely for um, to find direct images showing somebody raping a victim or people gang raping a victim. I don't think that Hamas themselves would record that. I don't think Gazans themselves would record that. And I would think it would be very difficult for anyone else to record that. Just because I know Muslim culture, I know I know that uh, the, the Islamists, they would do it, but they would never record it. Attribution. Hamas and other Palestinian armed groups including but not limited to the Palestinian Islamic Jihad and popular resistance committees have claimed responsibility for the attacks of October 7. In its report, Our Narrative, Operation Al-Aqsa Flood, Hamas has, however, denied claims of harm against civilians, including the commission of rape. Given the mission was not to... Given the mission was not investigative, it did not gather information and or draw conclusions on attribution of alleged violations to specific armed groups. Such attribution would require a fully fledged investigative process. So um, while they do have reasonable grounds and also convincing information near proof that multiple acts of uh, sexual violence and sexual torture were committed against Israelis inside Israel and in Gaza, it is not their job to attribute it to a certain group and they will leave that to a fully full-fledged investigation. But of, obviously, uh, it was probably Hamas being the leader of this. What some people don't know to, the, to this day is that Hamas was not the only organization that um, participated in, in the October 7 attacks. Hamas was the leader of this, of this operation. Hamas was the, was the leader of the October 7 attacks. They planned it and they breached the fences and they, they, they poured in like the rats that they are. But um, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, which is um, another Islamist terrorist organization that is actually even more extreme than Hamas, joined them. They were their closest allies. And also other organizations, not just Islamists, by the way, also other organizations that are secular and that uh, are socialist or communist joined them as well. So the leadership here is very much uh, Islamist, but not all of the elements that joined the attack were Islamists. Has to be pointed out. So you could say, oh, it's just, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's about ideology. It's about Islamic extremism and this and that. I'm sorry, but... Uh, as much as I like to uh, say that Islam is a big problem, I must say it is not limited to Islam. It is not limited to the Islamic uh, Islamic jihadists. It's not. It's not just limited to that. It also includes other groups. Uh, the Popular Resistance Committee is for example um a different group that is not that does not have islamism at its core but rather just uh palestinian nationalism and uh anti-zionism um some of the groups that joined were for example the pflp which is which is less known today was much more known in the past popular front for the liberation of palestine it's a palestinian marxist leninist revolutionary socialist organization communists they also joined in the attack another group was the democratic front for the liberation of palestine here that's a socialist group that split from the pflp communism marxism leninism maoism palestinian nationalism left-wing nationalism anti-zionism leftist groups communists and socialists also joined in on this attack not just Islamists. 
although the Islamists led the attack. They are the main party responsible. <clears throat> and then they did a visit to the occupied West Bank, where they came to several different conclusions. And they do have several observations, such as that there are accusers and implications of uh, accusations and implications of Israeli uh, security officers mistreating Palestinians in captivity and all of that. This only touches on a part of it because uh, that was not the point of this report, because the point of the report here was uh, specifically to report on the other part. And keep in mind, it was Israel themselves that invited this group to visit the West Bank and to also talk to the Palestinians there and to the authorities over there. Yes, it was Israel, Israeli authorities themselves invited the group to visit um, the Gaza envelope and also to visit the occupied West Bank as they have it described here, AKA Judea and Samaria. Uh, and they will do a different report on all of that later on. And whatever the conclusion is, I stand with Israel. Israel is the target, is the one attacked, support them all the way. But no matter what the conclusion is, of course, if there is evidence implicating uh, Israeli personnel, of course, if the evidence is solid, it has to be acknowledged and it has to be taken care of by Israeli authorities and by others in charge. Have to be fair and have to follow the, the logic, the evidence, and the law. Of course. However, we know for a fact that Hamas operated with mass sexual violence and so on. And Israel has, uh, has clear policies and legal procedures in place to prevent personnel from doing that and punish them if they do. Conclusions. <clears throat> Overall, based on the totality of information gathered from multiple and independent sources at the different locations, there are reasonable grounds to believe that conflict-related sexual violence occurred at several locations across the Gaza periphery, including in the form of rape and gang rape during the 7 October attacks, credible circumstantial information which may be indicative of some form of sexual violence, including genital mutilation, sexualized torture, or cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment was also gathered. With regards to the hostages, the mission team found clear and convincing information that some hostages taken to Gaza have been subjected to various forms of conflict-related sexual violence and has grounds to believe reasonable grounds to believe that such mild violence may be occurring uh, sexual violence hostages and uh, multiple independent sources at different locations reasonable grounds to believe that Sexual violence occurred at several locations across the Gaza periphery, including rape and gang rape. Credible circumstantial information may be indicative of some, some, of some forms of sexual violence, including genital mutilation, sexualized torture, or cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment. The mission team was unable to establish the prevalence of sexual violence and concludes that the overall magnitude, scope, and specific attribution of these violations would require a full-fledged investigation. A comprehensive investigation would enable the information base to be expanded in locations which the mission team was not able to visit and to build the required trust with supervisors, victims of conflict-related sexual violence who may be reluctant to come forward at this point. Regarding the occupied Palestinian territory, while its scope did not extend to verification, the mission team received information from institutional and civil society sources, uh, such as in, in direct interviews about some forms of sexual violence against Palestinian men and women in detention setting, during house raids and at checkpoints. Though the mission team did not visit Gaza, the office will continue to monitor the situation. Okay. So no verifications, but they did receive some information on that, and we'll see what happens. But the report is very, very obvious, very clear. 
people are in denial. And they're making all kinds of accusations now and saying, oh, the UN has been fooled by Israel. This is not being fooled by Israel. This is as objective as it gets and as careful and legalistic and forensic as it gets. And it shows that they have reason to believe, reason that would convince a reasonable person that multiple acts of sexual violence, including rape, gang rape, mutilation, and so on, were committed by Gazans against Israelis inside Israel and Gaza. Patterns of people being stripped naked, tied up and killed, possibly raped, attached to trees and poles, tied up and naked. Uh, some just with their with their pants taken off, tied, which indicates that there was probably a rape taking place. Bodies burned up. Dead bodies raped. And so on. And this report, um, and also, yeah, um, even stronger evidence with even higher confidence that hostages were sexually abused with almost certainty in Gaza after being taken hostage by Hamas. And reasonable grounds to believe that hostages currently kept by Hamas are still experiencing sexual violence and torture as we speak, which is why they must be taken out of their released as soon as possible. And no matter what you, where you stand, I don't really care. After this point, no matter what happens within the next few months, no matter when the fighting eventually continues, no matter if there is a ceasefire in between or not, eventually what needs to be done is to completely and fully destroy Hamas and make sure none of it, none of this ever happens again that none of this can ever happen again. And maybe to go back to the policy that Israel uh, had initially when they disengaged from the Gaza Strip, to say, if missiles are fired, if Gaza elects a, a leadership that attacks Israel, we will... Um, we will give up on all kinds of plans for autonomy and go in there and take the whole thing and re-educate it and govern it ourselves. If it needs to be done, Israel should do it. So no such thing should ever be populated, uh, should ever be tolerated by any population, by anyone in the world. Remember, remember what Amalek did to you, as the Bible says. All right. Uh, urge all parties to the conflict to adopt a humanitarian ceasefire and to ensure that expertise on addressing conflict-related sexual violence informs the design and implementation of all ceasefire and political agreements and that the voices of women and affected communities are heard in all conflict resolution and peace building processes. So what, what is being what is uh, what is what's, what is supposed to be done here now? from here on at this point is that uh, this report has been issued and the team has now established reasonable grounds to uh, to to to, pr to proceed with investigations into sexual violence. The team now with the experts calls on the UN to start a full-fledged investigation. And this is where if approved, the investigation should begin and teams will have to go into Israel and into Gaza to do a very thorough and very deep investigation of all of the evidence, everything that was seen by this team and everything that was not seen by this team to analyze the extent of the sexual violence and torture and all kinds of other um, you know, uh, heinous crimes and then to bring a final report and a conclusion. At this point, one thing is sure. It's clear that Hamas and other groups, or even civilians, 
did commit sexual assaults, sexual violence in different forms on multiple occasions to Israelis on October 7. And I hope they pay for that. Uh, yeah, okay. Roberta Glass, True Crime Report, made a super chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Including UNRWA workers, probably too, yeah. There are probably uh, UNRWA workers who are actually engaged in the sexual violence as well. Wouldn't surprise me if people who work in UNRWA actually engaged in raping Israelis, including men, women, and children. Rennie W said, AP, thanks for the light you keep shedding on these horrors. Leftist channels like LBC desperately want to change the topic back to Islamophobia. Thank you. Thank you, Rene. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Doshi Mayan said, UN should be disbanded and all of its funding should be given back to countries. I think the UN has initially uh, inherently a good purpose. It's just that it was completely perverted and turned into something ridiculous at this point. Into something ridiculous where there is a, a, a relative morality applied where um, since all countries in the world are participants, they should all be able to sit on the Human Rights Council, for example. Things like these are, 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 to, are thought within the UN, which is why countries like Iran or even Syria or other countries can become, uh, can, can make it to the Human Rights Council or you know Council for Women, Women's Rights and so on. The UN has become a joke in many ways. In my opinion, the whole thing should be taken over. Many of them should be kicked out, and many of the UN branches should be completely abolished. But yeah, it's probably okay to to destroy the whole thing and, and start something new. <laughs> Misty Moore said, thank you for reporting on this AP. Still, people will try to deny it happened. I stand with Israel. Uh, yeah. And if anyone still at this point um, tries to deny this and says, no, no, this didn't take place, it's all just, uh, they are just believing Israelis. So they don't understand, uh, they either don't understand or don't want to admit what is happening here. This report clearly establishes that uh, multiple acts of sexual violence and torture did take place indeed. They just need to further establish all the details and the extent and all that. I stand with Israel. And here's my wife, Mrs. Apostate, saying, love you, keep up the good work. You're speaking up for those who have been silenced in death. Thank you. Thank you for being with me and giving me strength and help. June Trenholms made, made us a super sticker. Thank you so much. Judy Deutsch, Judy Deutsch says, Danke, dass du die Stimme der Vernunft bist. Thank you. Danke schön. Danke dir. Misha Margolin became a YouTube member. Thank you so much for joining. Ari Wasserman said, I'm a pedicle doctor. You are not a pedicle doctor. How prove? How do you prove what the Jews say? <laughs> ES1002, Mariam Barguti's 10-7 article on Al Jazeera. Yeah, these, these terrorist advocates should just all go fuck themselves. Um, and if anyone still supports Hamas at this point, then... I'm going to hold back one more time and I'm going to leave it at this. Spread what you heard and what you what you saw. I will put a link to this entire report in, th in the description and also quickly just pin it here for all those who want to look at it and also quickly show on the screen. So here is um, the link. I'm putting it into the description and pinning uh, into the chat and pinning it and we'll also add it to the description if you click the link you will land on this side which is the un news story page what is happening to me okay and on this side when you are on the story here it says right here uh pramila Patan ad uh, added in a press release issued along with the report 
And once you click on the report, you can see the entire report that I just went through. Access it if you need to read this, read summaries, um, spread the information, spread everything that you heard, make people know about the truth. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining and listening. And I hope that the criminals are brought to justice. I hope that there is peace and hope. And I stand with Israel. Ian Makole made a super chat. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Have a fantastic day and stay away from Islam.